came here today to have a service in memory of our sister Joan Gilbert. Her place of service was right here at the Bible Baptist Church and the time of her <clears throat> date of her birth was June the 7th, 1933. The place of birth was in Columbus, Ohio. She passed away June the 15th right here in Tahunga, California at the age of 54 years old. She survived by her husband, Dan Gilbert, and uh, Pastor Dave Gilbert's son, missionary Mike Gilbert, a son, and Danny Gilbert, a grandson, Becky Gilbert and Suzanne Gilbert, her granddaughters, and Jeremiah Gilbert and Joel Gilbert, grandson, and Jason Gilbert, all grandson and a host of friends, as most of you can see. I was in Florida a few days ago preaching a meeting. And she was there in a wheelchair, I believe it was Monday, two weeks ago, and uh, just chirpy as she could be, and told me, she said, I'll see you in July. But like most of us, we never know what tomorrow may hold. I went home, talked to my mother just as soon as I got there, and just as soon as I got home from the meeting, I'd worked with my mother, been her pastor over 20 years, and then about uh, maybe seven, eight hours after I talked to her, she got her hair fixed, got ready for a vacation, and went home to glory in just about 30 seconds. Amen. Without a heart attack, without a stroke. And I cried for two days, and then it come preaching time on Monday. And uh, crying time was over. It was preaching time. I looked across the congregation. I saw people that my mother had won to Christ. I saw children that my mother had uh, brought up. I never laid down the bed in my night life. Wasn't somebody laying next to me. She had found somewhere. So you say, Brother Wood, is these people perfect? No, I pastored her for over 20 years. She was not perfect. Thank God she was forgiven. She loved the Lord. She loved her children, and my mother served God 68 years. Now, that's a while, brother. That's a while. And, uh, and so Miss Gilbert here, she, she went from horse races to the real race. Amen. Amen. She left the monetary gain and went to the great gain. Amen. And so we thank God for that. And so we came today, not really to weep. The weeping has been over now for a few days. Some of us will have memories, precious memories. But we've come here to rejoice of a sister who has went to be with the Lord and is far better. And I imagine about time she stepped over uh, in glory land, she, Miss Wood said, she said, you know, Miss Wood, I've heard your son speak of you many times and praise you on earth. He, she said, well, he probably exaggerated a little bit. <laughs> Amen. All right. But uh, that's the way some of these old saints of God are. Amen. Amen. But we're glad today to know that and not be any reverend, but she's safe and secure on the other side where there's no aches or ailment, no suffering or pain will be allowed there. So it's good when one of God's children go home. We do it all backwards. The Bible said weep when they're born, and when they're born this day and time, you better weep for them. They've got a hard road ahead. But bless God, when you die, you're going to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And about this uh, casket and that grave is, is not a dwelling place. It's just a hotel where you're going to spend the night. So there's going to be a getting up morning. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. I've got some friends who've already gone. I'm looking forward to seeing them in our Lord. So let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Ask God to speak today to each one of us. Maybe some of you ladies here. Ladies, I want to tell you this Bible is full of mothers. We start in the book of Genesis, the third chapter, and all the way through the book of Genesis. God describes the mothers out of Israel. We get over in the book of Exodus and we find Moses' his mother trying to find a way to get her boy out of trouble. And all the way through the book of Exodus, it talks about these mothers. We get all the way through the Bible, mother, mother, mother. We get to the first chapter of the book of Matthew and we find four great mothers, not perfect, not sinless, but godly women that the Lord used. And then when the Lord Jesus started his ministry, his mother was right there with him at his death, that mother was right there with him. At the day of Pentecost, those mothers were right there. And even in the book of Revelation, we find the bad mother, the mother of harlots. It so seemed like God crams the Bible full of precious mothers and then said that their price is far above rubies. Isn't that wonderful? God commends the mothers. Amen. Our Father, we come to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the sweet Spirit of God who's able to comfort the heart. And Lord, there's children, there's grandchildren, there's a host of friends and co-laborers 
their hearts this morning are, are broken and realize that one has left our presence and we'll not see them till the resurrection morning. But that might not be far off. And so, Lord, we're not of those who have no hope, but we're of those who have a good hope, a good hope, that blessed hope of our glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. So, Lord, today I pray you'll encourage the saints. May the will of God be done in this service. For Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Oh, 
face of my Savior, but serving Him has been such a thrill. I've never seen the gates of that city, oh, but one day. Psalm about six months ago I made the statement down home I said you know it seems very strange to me that I preach so many people's funerals who is not right with God and people who left this land and left meet the Lord uh, uh, not exactly like they should have never served the Lord like they should have had. And then I, in the last uh, three or four months, I've been to a, one of my preacher's friends' wife's funeral. Miss Carl Lackin, Brother Jack Wood, and, and another preacher friend of mine down in Texas, Brother James, and uh, a godly women who loved the Lord and served him uh, right after the end. It was kind of refreshing to me, if I could say those words, to go and see people who lived their lives Live them right out to the end and live them for God. We have we have a lot of this quitting business and turning back and and what have you. But I I, I used to just keep an old uh, half bulldog for a catch dog and I admired them dogs because they just wouldn't quit. I used to have a choke collar I had to put on and choke them off while I'd sick them on. And I used to sit down and look and I said, now that's my kind of dog. That's that. that's my kind of dog. You know. And I I just believe that God's people. When God bursts a man, I believe he puts something in him. Amen. Amen. I really do. I believe when he bursts a woman, uh, if a black Angus calf can find his way to a black Angus mama, when it's a hundred others look just like her uh, in the pastor, I believe you and I somehow could find our way to the Word of God. Amen. 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 All right. I've got more sense than a calf has. I know that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But in the 23rd chapter of the book of Psalms, uh, the great uh, shepherd, David himself, the great shepherd. And you know, if you want uh, somebody to recommend a, a good horse to you, you ask a horseman. If you want somebody to recommend a car to you, 
You either get your mechanic or a good car dealer and ask them to recommend it for you. Well, if you need a shepherd, you better go to somebody who knows what a shepherd is. Right. And David was one of the best shepherds. He was a faithful a shepherd, not afraid of the lions or the bears or the giants or anybody. And he said, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Now, I want you to look at that first verse of Scripture, if you please. This man claims a relationship with God. He, I mean, he claims a relationship. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Now, I'm glad today to make this announcement that God is my Father. I hear a lot of people talk about adoption, and I know a little bit about the doctrine of adoption, but I have not been adopted into the family of God. I was birthed into the family of God by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, saved by the grace of God. I'm in God's family, not by adoption, but by birth. I'm a child of God. I know all about adoption. Don't get, a, don't get ahead of me. I know all about that. But I'm a child of God by birth. Amen? Amen? The Lord is my shepherd. And since God is my Father, the Lord Jesus, not much in the Old Testament about God the Father. But the minute God the Son showed up, He started talking about God the Father. And He came and revealed to you the Father. Nobody said, Our Father which art in heaven. Until the Lord Jesus got here, and he said, Now when you pray, you pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. Amen. And I like that. He revealed the Father. Amen. You got that? Yeah. He revealed the Father, and then he revealed to me that I could become his son. Now, the Bible said we're, uh, that we are sons of God. The Bible said we're joint heirs with Christ. And uh, I'm not going to be a son of God. I am a son of God. Yeah. I was birthed a son of God. I mean, 30-something years ago, just about 15 miles from here, in the little mission, I got saved. An old hoodlum, an old outlaw, got in. 30-something years ago, God saved me. I've been in the family of God ever since. I had not been a faithful son, but I've got a whipping for that. Amen? Amen. I'm jealous if you're a son or not. God overhauled you every now and then. Amen. But I'm his son today. Amen. I'm not only uh, his son, but you, if you're saved, let me... You're his daughter. He said, come out from that world. And he said, I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. Now, David claimed this relationship. Now, I hear a lot of people claim it. Uh, he don't act like he's their father. They don't act like they're a son. They don't act like they're a daughter. But they claim God's their father, and they have a title deed to a home over that and live like hell on this side. Yeah. Amen. You say, preacher, don't you believe in backsliding? Yeah, I've practiced a whole lot of it. But I, I want to say this. When I did, my father showed up. My father showed up. Amen. I've had old man Jack Woods to whoop me with a rope, with a tire flap, with his fist. I mean, everything he get his hands on. He literally beat the devil out of me. And I tell you one thing, I thought he was rough until I got saved. When I got saved sometime, I, I just look up and say, share, please, share, please. I, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, the Lord loves everybody. And he's got me by the nap of the neck, got me tied up tight, got a wet rope beating the devil out of me. And I, I said, well, you act like my stepfather. Amen, no. He's my real father. My real father. And a real father corrects his children. Corrects his children. He don't put a punish them and whip them for punishment. He whips them for correction that they might be better children for the glory of God. Now, David claim, claim to be related to the Father. He claimed to be an heir of God. And Paul brings this out. We are an heir of God. In other words, uh, you come down here and you said this poor lady. Poor lady, nothing, man. Yeah, poor about what? You said, well, Brother Wood, they never had a house out in the country. Well, she's got a one now. <laughs> got a river to stick her feet in. Amen? Amen. That's right. Oh, you said, Brother Wood, I want to get me a little house out in the mountain. She got one. She got, hey, and the Bible said it's, it's a mansion. That's what the Bible says. You said that's a fantasy. It's not a fantasy. It's a faith of the child of God. Yes, sir. And we claim, we claim to be heirs of God. We claim to be joint heirs with Christ. Whatever Christ has got, I've got. Whatever he uh, inherits, I inherit. Wherever he lives, I live, and that's good enough for me. And David said, the Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. In other words, he said, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Thank God I'm satisfied. I might be a pauper today, but I'm satisfied. And I'm going to tell you something, it's hard to help a satisfied man. I'm satisfied. Amen? You just can't help a satisfied person. I've seen people come behind, give this dear lady this and that and the other, and to her it was a trinket. Amen? Oh, it might have been precious, it might have been priceless, but this woman was headed to another country, and she wasn't worried about that. Now, I want you to notice, the Bible said, He maketh me. I wonder why He said, maketh me. That means He makes you do it. I literally believe in the Hebrew Greek, it said, He maketh me. <laughs> Amen? He maketh me. Now, when my daddy made me do anything, he said, Go to bed. I said, I don't want to go to bed. He said, I didn't ask you. You want to just go to bed. <laughs> Amen? He maketh me lie down and bring me And sometimes God has got to come to His children and literally make them a rest in the Lord. Amen. Now, He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still water. Now, here's what I see. Not only did she claim relationship to God, but there was a calmness of the soul. Now, the child of God, I don't care what the star is. I've been saved. I've been saved 30-something years. I've been in everything you could get in. I was born getting into things. I'm telling you, I was just... I, 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 my, my mother swear, I was born in a little ghetto house downtown in Houston. My daddy was a mule man running a mule barn down. And, uh, and uh, my mother came. My mother was squalling and crying. And uh, daddy come in and said, what's the matter? And she said, he got a water head. Look at his head. And he said, well, he must have water feet, too. Look at his feet. <laughs> Amen? And that, that I was. Look, I got the form. Now, I got a daughter who wears an eight hat. Did you ever hear such thing? I've got a boy that wears a seven and seven eighths hat. Amen. All five of my boys got a head like a water head. I got the littlest head of a bunch, and I wear a seven and five eighths. That's a pretty good size hat. Amen. But, my, but mama, daddy said, hey, he's all right. He just got a wood head. He ain't, ain't got no water head, got wood head. Amen. Oh, tell you something. A child of God, when he's born to the Spirit of God, He's got some marks on him that makes him a Christian and shows the world he's a Christian. There's some marks of a Christian. Amen. Well, you can drive down and you said, they said, you said, that's one of them woods boys. <laughs> there he is. I mean, you can't miss him. Amen. You can't miss him. David said, here, I got a, he, he made me to lie down in green pasture. Green pasture. What, what did Jesus say about that in the 10th chapter of John? He said, they'll go in and out and find green pasture. I want you to notice something, please. In and out. Most Christians get saved and forget to get in. Never get in the church. Never get in the work of God. Never get in anything. And never, never find any green grass. I, I was down in uh, San Diego uh, a couple of days ago. And I, I looked at all them animals down in that zoo. And they was out there eating and they had feeding the green grass. And, and I seen 25 goats up on top of the hill. There wasn't one sprig of grass, wasn't nothing but a rock. And one of them was coming down a sheer rock. I got, I, my wife said, how does that goat walk? I said, a goat can live anywhere. <laughs> a goat can live about seven, eight months without water. Just get the dew off the grass. He don't need no water. He's a goat. He can stay in a dead church for 20 years. He's a goat. He's a goat. The whole thing about a goat, you've got to be dangerously careful. Don't let have no revival and let it rain on him. Because a wet goat smells terrible. <laughs> Amen. But he has some claims here. But there was calmness in his soul. And this calmness comes from the storms of life. And a child of God, when he gets saved, don't you think that everything going to be rosy from here to heaven? If it is, I got on the wrong road. <laughs> Amen. It's been pretty rosy. Amen. But it didn't have many flowers all formed. Amen. And so there's storms of life. There's sickness. There's sorrow. There's shame and disgrace. Why, well, they had people in Houston, Texas say, There he is. There he is. Shame and disgrace. I've had preachers to say everything but the truth about me. Yeah. One guy told David Jones, said, You know this, that, and the other. And David said, We're. When did you meet Brother Woody? I've never seen him before in my life. <laughs> Amen. My definition of a preacher is a guy that meets every situation with an open mouth. Amen. <laughs> Here he had a calmness of soul. Calmness of soul. I don't care if it's death. I don't care if it's disease. I don't care if it's defeat. I don't care if it's disaster. I don't care if it's disappointment. The child of God can have calmness in his soul because God sent somebody the calmer of the storm. 
When Jesus didn't get up and rebuke them disciples, he said, Peace, be still. And that sea laid down and lapped his feet and kissed his feet. Why, the disciples were laying there. They were scared to death. But calmness came in that boat because the master was on board. Could I give you verse 3, please? He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I like that. That gives me a promise of cleanness in this life. You walk through this life, he restores my soul. Yes, a Christian gets off here, he gets off there. He falters here, he fails there. He makes mistakes there. But he's got a loving Savior. Thank God today, you know, we're always going around asking somebody to pray for us. I tell you the wisest thing you can do. You probably tell me that. I just sleep and go to sleep. I know a lot of people say they pray ten hours a day. I thought they prayed five minutes. But I'll tell you, Jesus prays all the time. I'm just being honest with you. I know that I can see some of y'all are deeply spiritual. I see that murine in your eye and you kind of look glassy, you know. Better quit smoking that stuff. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He restores my soul. God can clear the child of God. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, and he's praying, and he's praying, and he's praying for you. You say, I'm having trouble living for God. Don't worry about it. He's praying. And there's somebody inside of you, the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to live for God. The Holy Spirit is saying, come on and live for God. And the preacher is saying, come on and live for God. The saints of God around you are saying, come on and live for God. And if you don't live for God, it's because you don't want to. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Don't come down here with that baloney to me and say, well, the Lord knows I'm weak. And the Lord knows that I'm a dog. That's when you live like a dog. You confess it. Why don't you confess you're a child of God? Why don't you confess you're a king's son? Why don't you confess you're the daughter of God Almighty? Why don't you confess you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ? And the Holy Ghost that's inside of you has all power, all power. And this book, this book right here can cleanse your life, make you what you ought to be. Definitely can. That's a cleansing. Now notice verse 4. You said, I'm through. Well, I ain't. <laughs> Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk. Now, I want you to notice, it's bad to use I all the time, but he keeps using it. So the Holy Ghost said, write it down. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. And I'm going to tell you, all that, all that Satan can do with death is show us a shadow. When I was a kid one time, I was cutting through one of them alleys there in Houston. and some trees growing there. Years ago, and, and there, there stood a big man standing right there. And I drove back to hit him, and then I seen he had a branch on him. It's a tree. Them shadows are fool you. Now, all I had to do was sock that, th- that tree, and I've been in terrible trouble. Most people are just fighting the shadows. Because Jesus has done men down there in death. And he's walking around there and death says, Who's that? Jesus said, It's God. He said, We never have handled him before. Amen? He walked down the hell and Satan said, Who's that? Jesus said, It's God. He said, We ain't never handled him before. He said, No, you can't handle him either. The grave said, What in the world? It's rumbling down here. Jesus said, it's God. He walked out of the grave, walked out of death, walked out of hell, walked into heaven with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And I'm going to say this morning, that grave is just a rut where the child of God spends a night because in the morning he's a coming. Oh, there's, there's a cleanse and there's a comfort. Verse 4, there's a comfort. Yea, though I walk through the valley, I fear no evil. Thou art with me, he can handle it all. Furthermore, he's done handled it all. Yeah, sure. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Look at that word comfort. I mean, he promised us a comforter. He said, I will not leave you comforted. If I go away, I will send a comforter. And on the day of Pentecost, he came. Yeah. And he's been here ever since. And he's here this morning. And he came for one purpose. Grandsons, granddaughters, sons, daddy, or friends, everybody. The Holy Ghost is here to comfort the child of God. Amen. That's why he came. Well, there have been times when Seemed like nobody wanted me. 
Nobody want to say anything to me or speak to me. A few of them spit on me. It seems like sometimes all these problems and trouble drive us to Him only who can comfort us. I'm glad. I'm glad i got a comforter. And then I want you to notice this next thing, please. In verse 5, it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with all my cup runneth over. That cup in the Bible is a is a strange sight. But you'll say, you know, God began to move after about two years and give me a love for these people. And Carl told me, he said, I've tried to get her to go to Europe. He's been around the world. He's preached all over the world. He said, that woman will not leave this county. He said, she wants to get on that bus route and win people of God and visit and knock on doors. And I told him about the other day, I said, women, would somebody please come down? to this casket and kneel and ask the mantle to fall on you, this dear saint of God, that you might walk out and do the same thing that God used her to do. She didn't like her cup, but she drank it. And when she got through drinking it, she kept on drinking. And the more she drank, the better it got for the glory of God. And she went out of here. She went out here to put her in a hospital, stayed in all time. Last ten years, she's had cancer. Doctor came in there and she said, Sonny boy, come here. He's about 50 years old. <laughs> said, Sonny boy, come here. Doctor walked home and said, Jewel, what do you want? She said, I want to tell you one more time how to be saved. So she told him one more time. She said, Now, Sonny boy, kneel down beside this bed and give your heart to Jesus. And he said, I believe we will. So he knelt down there and he got up and he looked at that old saint of God and he said, You know, I've cut on you and cut on you and cut on you. But he said, You just keep coming back. Oh, she said, Son, the Lord's real. He said, you're not going to believe this. said, my mother and daddy were missionaries. But he said, I never had much confidence in religion. But he said, I've seen it displayed here in this hospital. Yes, sir. And he said, I believe God just sent you here to win me. She said, well, that's, I'm glad you think like that. But she said, Doc, I'm going to tell you something. He said, there's been four nurses and two other doctors saved since I've been in here. <laughs> and my cup runneth over. <laughs> my cup runneth over. Strange thing what God will do to get into a hospital to win some doctors and nurses to the Lord. My cup runneth over. Amen. I mean, now let me give you this last thing. I know some already went to sleep, but it said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this speaks to me about something that's continuous, something that is steady, something that is unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord, continuous. Life is a race with a reward. To the wicked, hell is a reward. To the child of God, it's heaven and all that goes with it. Continuance here is a is a service with a Savior. You think about it. Many of you have been serving the Lord a long time. It's just not a service to God. Some people do it. I couldn't do that. Some people come to church and they have service and they're very busy. But there's no Savior in it. But oh, wonderful, wonderful service that has a Savior that is doing it far and for the glory of and not for themselves. And this is what David is saying. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, this is a duty with this demand. A lot of us want the duty, but no demands. But David said here, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, and I will dwell. I'll stay in the house of God forever. This is a faith with a finish. Dan wouldn't mind me saying this. I don't believe the boys would, but I went through their pictures, and I was looking down there, and, and I saw... Miss Gilbert standing in a winter circle with an old plug, looked like it was about 800. It wasn't a little purse, and it's in the winter circle, and Mike was in there with him, and I said, Man, this something. And, and in their hardest young people, they probably said, This is great. But oh, when they got saved, yeah. we're headed to another winter circle. Amen. Amen. And it's not temporary. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Not temporary. What are you talking about, preacher? Listen, we're headed to the winter circle. Those who finish the race. I, I couldn't be Brother John Kyles. Thank God for him. I've known him 
ever since the day I got saved. But uh, I, I couldn't run all that. I mean, that, that drive me absolutely out of my mind. There's other men here that could. But uh, I'm just trying to plow out my little corner. <laughs> you see, I, I noticed down in Texas, hey, they plow some in fields, 10,000 acres or 15,000 acres, and they got 15 raw equipment. But I just got me one mule and one little plow. And see, them big tractors go around, and they, they miss them corners. Yeah. I'm just down there trying to plow out my corner in that ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to me. I can't do it. Thank God for those men. I tell my boys, they're my heroes. Look at them. Thank God for them. They've done a great work. Thank God for every man. But I'm not that man. I've got to get out and rescue them. I've got to get out in the ghetto. I've got to find some... I went in a cemetery the other day in the grave funeral service and no old safe cracker laying there. And I looked at him, and 60 years old. And I walked over and I said to a little old girl, I said, uh, and she's 40 years old, I said, uh, I don't tell you about what she said, don't come on with me of that. I said, you shut your mouth and listen to me. I stole the first dozen diapers they ever put on you. You shut your mouth. You didn't hear what I got to say. Her mama sat there and said, that's true. That's exactly what happened. 40 years ago. She listened. I looked around there and I walked over and the little boy there and I said, Is your name John Walter? And he said, yeah. I said, you know, tw- about 28 years ago, I got your mom out of the penitentiary and she came home and had the baby down at my place. And we had to take her back to the penitentiary. He said, be 28 years ago tomorrow. I said, you like to be a penitentiary kid. I said, you owe me a visit. Amen. You come to church and hear the Word of God. He said, oh, you want to preach, I'm coming. Amen. Twenty-eight years I'm waiting for that fruit. <laughs> Amen. Hey, you got to finish, honey. Oh, you said, brother, what I've been out there a year now, and ain't nothing. Happen. Ain't nothing happens in a year, baby. Ain't nothing happens in a year, huh? You ever see a horse run when he's a year old, Dan? No, 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 no. Amen. Well, I tell you, I got through that service. I walked outside, and old man said, "Oh, I preacher." He said, "You remember thirty years ago?" He was trying to win me to God, an old safe cracker. And I said, yeah. He said, I just got out of penitentiary. I've done 25 years. So I lost my family and everything. He got in my car. And I said, Troy, let me tell you one more time what Jesus done me. He said, you don't have to tell me. I know what he done with you, man. I run with you. I knew you. He said, I know you. I know what God done for you. And that's all wonderful. But you know what? I want to finish. You know, I've seen a cow give four gallons of milk. That's wonderful. But if she sticks her foot in it about that time, it ain't no good. <laughs> Preacher, it's easy to get four or five gallons of milk. But it's easy to stick your foot in it too. Yes, sir. And ain't nobody going to drink it if you stick your foot in it. We've got to be careful. We've got to be cautious. We won't do like this, sister. We just won't run it to the end. We get to the end, we say, I finished my course. Now, some folks ain't never enrolled in the course yet. But I tell you, you better get enrolled, and you better get busy, you better get your pencil piece of paper, and you better get her mapped out. And it finished her course. Sister Gilbert has finished her course. She's home, and she said, why? They did, them preachers didn't tell me half of it. <laughs> and the Lord said, darling... They're so stupid, they don't know how to. <laughs> what a Savior. Folks, I just want to say that. What a Savior. What a Savior. To take a bunch of outlaws like us and bring us all together. Save us by His grace. Wash us in His precious blood. Then come one day, take us to heaven, and say, I want to give you a reward for what you've done. I said, my soul, reward for what we've done. <laughs> Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yes. And I can say this today and never back up. About 34 years ago, exactly 34 years ago, I got saved and got called to preach right here in Cypress, California. And it's been mercy and goodness. Yes, sir. Oh, I've heard the rumbles and the roars of the brethren and the arguments and the confusion. But every morning I wake up, he's sweeter. Somebody said, you worship the Bible. I said, I sure do. 
I kiss it every morning, good morning, kiss it good night, every night. That's right. I'm a Bible worshiper. Well, see, that's my mother. I've always loved my mother. Amen. Let's pray. Might be some here today, and you say, Brother Wood. Brother Wood, I, that 23rd Psalm is a precious psalm. But the Lord is really not my shepherd. Brother Wood, I've never been saved by the grace of God, and I, I'd like to give you an opportunity to look down in your heart today and say, Am I a child of God? Have I been saved? Do I have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine? Do I have a foretaste of that glory divine? Check your heart today. Check yourself today. Examine yourself and see whether you be in the faith. If you're not saved, there'd be no better day than today to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and find free pardon of sin. He'll save you today. But then today there might be those who you've not been serving God. You're saved. You're a blood-washed child of God and you know it. But your life is not counting. You're just about out. Some of you done throw closed your Bible and the dust has begun to settle. You're not going to get away with it. Can't get away with it. God is your Father. You better make this casket here today for this gym. You better come down and kneel at this casket and say, Dear Lord, would you please let the mantle fall on me? This sister loves souls. She loved the Lord. She loved the church. Let her mantle fall on me. Lord, I'm just a young Christian, but I, I want to serve God. You might be here this morning. I'm giving you an invitation to come. You said, Brother Wood, that would be so out of order. I believe if Miss Gilbert was here today, she'd tell you just as what I said. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now is the accepted time for you to just come, kneel down and say, Dear God, help me to live for you. Dear God, I want to rededicate my life. I'm cold. I'm indifferent. I'm away from God. I want to pray. And I'm, uh, these, these, these kids are going to sing. And when they sing, you do what God... Maybe you just need to kneel right there in the front. Maybe right down in front of your pew. Uh, right there in your seat. I don't care where you do it. Just tell God, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm not finishing this way. I'm running. I'm running. I'm out of the race. Lord, I've quit. I want to get back in. Father, speak to that heart that needs help here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Could we all stand? Could we all stand? Maybe somebody needs to come. Maybe somebody needs to make us an altar today. Why? You come right on. You do what God wants you to do. Thank you. God. Let God have His way. Maybe you just need to pray. Do no better time than this. Let God have His way.
I settled the day. The cup running over, the kindness in the soul. everyone just pray while these kids sing that first verse again why don't you just pray you said brother would I claim to be a child of God do you have that in writing you said preacher you got yours in writing yes got it right here in my hand got it written God gave me a promise I know I'm a child of God nor pass from death in the land got in writing. I want to sing us one other verse and I'm through. People are coming. Let God have His way. name. We thank you, Lord, for this service, this memorial service. We pay respects to our sister and her labor in the Lord and this precious family. The grace of God has been manifested in their life, Lord, in life and in death. We pray now, Lord, that you'll go with us as we make this last mile of a ride, Lord. Lord God, I pray that you'll strengthen the loved ones and family and these grandchildren Lord, a lot of things they don't understand today, but we pray that you'll give courage and strength and thank you, Lord, for the brethren and the sisters, Lord, that are here today saying thank God for this loved one. We thank you, Lord, for those who have took time and come out in these days. We appreciate it now, Lord. God bless the rest of this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, that you'll still be seated until the usher passes by.